can get into a neuroscience lesson uh, later if you want um, of the difference between sensation and perception. But just when you think about it, you don't you don't you don't need a neuro degree uh, to realize when you think about it that the act of seeing creates a seer and the scene. But they're all together as one act of seeing. There is necessarily there is no separate seer from the scene. Okay. Next verse. Identification with the belief of separation gives rise to limited understanding. Limited understanding creates a veil wherein the mind splits the unitive awareness, which is all there is, the awareness, into two. This is just what I've, basically what I said before. The internal perceiver that believes itself to be separate and a perceived separate external world. Okay. Uh, I'll go to the next verse uh, before I go into this example. The next verse. The mind splits unitive awareness into perceiver and perceived. The perceiver, which is only a thought, when you really think about it, you being a perceiver is only a thought. It's a concept in your mind. Then identifies with the belief that it is an empirical self, that it is a real, testable, tangible self, separate from a perceived, testable, tangible external world, which again, all of which is only a projection of the mind. So I'm, I'm gonna go into this. And the human mind does two things. And depending on who you are, whether you want to attribute it to the human mind or Advaitic Hindus will attribute it to Maya itself. They're a little more correct when you actually do some philosophical proofs, but it won't make sense to us at this point. Uh, just a, the human mind does two things. Every psychologist and neuroscientist will uh, can't, won't disagree with this. This is The human mind does two things. It creates... A, it likes to create stories and it maintains a suspension of disbelief. It hides the fact that it is the one creating the stories. This is how all of our reality is created. And we actually love this. We love it. Uh, this, is why, this is why movies work or plays or storybooks because Suspension of disbelief is important in story writing and in Hollywood, or we won't enjoy ourselves. If we can't believe that Transformers is a movie, uh, Transformers is a plot about alien robots that turn into cars and fight each other. Without suspension of disbelief, we'd be watching the movie the whole time going, this is total nonsense. I can't get into this. This is complete nonsense. You would constantly be watching the movie going, this is not real. None of this is real. And you would also be aware of the screen that you're watching it on. And you would just say, this is just images flashing on a screen. It's not real. And without suspension of disbelief, without your ability to suspend what you know to be true, you can't enjoy yourself. You just can't do it. You'd be too busy. You wouldn't be able to watch it as a movie. You would just be seeing images flashing on a screen of nonsense. And the reason why we do things like put on 3D glasses, or in other countries, we have 4D, right? Uh, here in the United States, our movie theaters are kind of, kind of, they're, they're primitive, right? Our theaters haven't been updated in decades, right? So uh, I, don't, I don't think we have 4D. I haven't seen a 4D theater in the United States. But in Mexico, Mexico, they're all over Mexico, and they're awesome. They're awesome. Mexican theaters are way nicer than American theaters. Um, and the reason why that's fun, now what they do in 4D is not only are you wearing 3D glasses, but, you know, they'll spray water and smells at you and the seats move around and all sorts of stuff happens to better immerse you into the film so you can feel like the film is more real than it really is. Because without it, that, to us, that's fun. 
We enjoy it. We like, we like that. The human mind loves it. So suspension of disbelief is a power. Both of these are powers of the mind. Uh, and, and again, we love it. We wouldn't want to do without it. Uh, sure, they're the cause of all, all suffering as well. But uh, as we'll get to, you will see there actually is no suffering. It's all your enjoyment. You love it. And one Swami says you suffer because you want to. Uh, this is the difference between an enlightened person and an unenlightened person. Um, actually, uh, an enlightened person would argue there is no difference. But at, at this juncture, we'll, we'll talk about... From our perspective, the difference between one is, is what you would consider suffering, an enlightened person would consider fun. Um, because it's not you that's suffering. Again, I'm getting a little out there now, but uh, let, me, let, me, let me reel it back into what I'm talking about. The human mind has this power to create stories. And, and it's nothing metaphysical. We see this all the time when we, optical illusions work this way. Or, you know, have you ever seen someone that you thought was somebody else? And you said, hey, so-and-so. And, you know, I'm Indian. It happens to me constantly. People always mistake me for other Indians. And, you know, I, I laugh it off as it being racist because, you know, folks in the United States can't tell Indians apart, right? The amount of times I've gone to an event and someone would be like, hey, Manish. And be like, my name's not Manish. But, you know, they saw, they know another Indian person and they just assume every Indian person they see is that Indian person. You know, it happens to black folk too, right? It, it just happens, right? And it actually happens to white folk too because uh, I've seen Indians mix up white folks. They don't feel bad about it, right? Uh, it's, it's a natural phenomenon of the human mind, right? So you mistake something for something else. Here's the, the classic example of the rope and the snake, which is a terrible example for an American, by the way. If any swamis are watching this from India, they always bring over this example of you mistake a rope for a snake. Uh, but in reality, it was never a snake. It was always a rope to begin with. But your mind superimposed or created the story that it was a snake. And you're like, ah, it's a snake. We, we of course, don't have this problem in the United States. It's a kind of a hard example. So if that, if, if that example goes over your head, don't worry about it. It goes over my head, too. I only understood it after the fact. Um, simply because in America, we really don't have experience with, with, with neither snakes nor ropes. Uh, the only time I've seen snakes are at the zoo, and they're safely behind a cage, and they're fun. And the only time I've ever had experience with a rope was in junior high gym class when an angry gym teacher was forcing me to try to climb it. And uh, let's face it, the, a rope, in my mind, is way more terrifying than a snake. So that example makes, makes no sense. Makes no sense. But it's, it, they're alluding to that notion, and that is proof. We experience it all the time. We mistake things for other things. Our, our minds tell stories. You've texted somebody, and they didn't text you back right away. And you create all sorts of stories of what you think might be going on there, right? So it is a natural thing of the mind to create stories and then utilize our power of suspension of disbelief to, to forget that it's a story that's been created. Uh, what we're finding out here through Drig Drishya Viveka and pretty much any other non-dual texts uh, from Eastern philosophy, what we're finding out here is what we consider to be reality in general. Our notion that we are this being that's living in a reality that's external to us and separate from us is that power itself of creating something from nothing on top of a suspension of disbelief or coupled with that suspension of disbelief that makes us forget that we are the ones that have created something from nothing and we take it to be real. Okay, so this misperception dissolves uh, once we actually discover and see for ourselves. You can take my word for it now, but when you really think about it, you will actually clearly, clearly see for yourself that this separation that you are you and I'm a separate person, me, 
and everything in this room is separate and everything you perceive is separate and you're limited so you have wants and you need to get stuff in order to fulfill those wants because the stuff outside of you is separate from you and you need it and all of that stuff, everything, everything that we perceive to be reality uh, is in fact this power of the mind or maya as a religious person will put it uh, it's only a product of the mind's identification with the thoughts that it's created, including the notion of I, which is also not real once you investigate it. And the projection power, this artificial reality creation power of the mind is not the problem. It's actually a lot of fun. Um, the problem is the suspension of disbelief power where in order for all of this to feel real, we have to forget that we've manufactured it from the get-go. It's all concepts in our mind. There is no substantive reality to it at all. Okay. Misperception arises when the mind identifies with its own movement of thought and projects the belief that it is a separate self. The mind believes itself to be a perceiver who is separate from what it perceives. When the mind awakens to this misperception, the belief in being a separate self disappears. What was all along non-existent is recognized to be non-existent. So what was all along essentially a really good hallucination is now recognized to be a really good hallucination. Next verse. Awareness is conceptually divided by the mind into perceiver and perceived, subject and object. He's almost repeating himself here. The division of subject and object is misperceived by the mind to be real. When essential nature, awareness, is realized, all division is understood to be only the product of the mind as thoughts. There are only your thoughts, and even those are objects whose reality is questionable. We're going to stop there for a while, and uh, that was verse 19. We are uh, about halfway through. We're going to continue with verse 20 uh, very quickly.